Good morning, it's uh, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and it's time for the first functional group update for Meltano, formerly known as BizOps. Uh, my name is Jacob Schatz, and I'm on the Meltano team. I'm gonna share my screen. And to start off, I wanted to Okay, give a thumbs up if you can see my screen. Great, thanks. So uh, to start off, I just wanted to introduce uh, Meltano, uh, formerly known as BizOps, because it's possible uh, that you don't know what Meltano is. So I would highly suggest you go over to the README. Uh, it explains a lot. We spent a lot of time making it uh, really nice and readable. Um, but I'm going to give you a quick TLDR. So Maltano is a framework which is for analytics, business intelligence, and data science. And I want to give you a quick example of um, the whole flow of Maltano. So here's Chloe. She's a talent operations specialist, and she works on recruiting at GitLab. And she needs to know how much time it takes us to go from resume to hire. And so Luckily, there is for Lever, which is the uh, SaaS product that we use for uh, keeping track of hires in that whole process through hiring, Lever has an API. And so we write some code that's going to basically vacuum up all of the Lever data. And it's going to take all that data and it's going to store it into uh, a database on the Google, Google Cloud platform, which is using uh, Cloud SQL with Postgres. And that data gets sent into our data warehouse, which is in the Google Cloud platform. Sorry about the vacuuming here. Uh, and from there, we run DBT jobs. Um, and basically all that does is that segments the data, aggregates it, and fiddles with it. And the whole purpose of that is so that once we have that data, we can put that data into a visualization called Looker. And so once we have that data into Looker, then we can finally answer Chloe's question of how long it takes to get um, from an actual resume uh, to hiring someone. And so what are the Meltano goals? The Meltano goals, uh, there's a few of them, is to meet the data team's needs. So Taylor is on the data team, and Mikael, uh, me, Giannis, and Josh are on the BizOps team. And so Taylor says, hey, we want to know the number of employees uh, from Bamboo HR. And so he says, can you create a Bamboo HR ELT so that we can extract, load, and transform that data from Bamboo HR? And so Mikael says, sure, hold on, I'll be right back. Let me create that. Um, so we want to apply software engineering principles to the uh, data science world. So in the data science world, um, I'm going to walk over here while, while I keep talking to quiet down the sound of the vacuum. Uh, so in the data science world, they might pass around data uh, using Excel spreadsheets. And you know that the Excel spreadsheets might go, oh my gosh, in a couple different versions. Um, you know, you might be passing around different uh, versions. And so you, what you really need is an end-to-end -end integrated solution, uh, which is what uh, we use in GitLab. We have an end-to-end -end integrated solution. So we can apply these software engineering principles of version control, continuous integration, and open source uh, to the data science world to make the process much easier. So first of all, we need to solve our own problems. Um, in Maltano, we're gonna use convention over configuration, and it's going to allow GitLab to make decisions from all parts of the company, marketing, sales, product, and engineering. And we're actually gonna be able to make these decisions uh, in GitLab. Um, so what are we currently working on? Um, our milestones follow GitLab milestone timeline. So uh, we're currently on milestone 0.3.0, and there's a link to the boards where you can see uh, two boards. You can see the BizOps team boards and you can see the data boards. So when we say that we're following the data team needs, uh, the data team has all their needs listed out uh, on boards. 
Uh, and with the label BizOps, those are um, things that the BizOps team is going to handle. So from a uh, standpoint of what have we done so far, um, we've created uh, extractor loaders and transformers, ELTs, uh, from Marketo, Lever, Zendesk, Bamboo HR, uh, is a work in progress. GitLab's a work in progress. NetSuite is a work in progress. And Salesforce is a work in progress. Um, and we have uh, more that are in the pipeline if you go check out the boards. Um, the GitLab and the NetSuite one are like 95% done. So there's already a lot of data that we can pull from this. Um, the team um, is Josh, uh, me, Giannis, and Mikael. And those are the things that we're currently working on. And I wanted to make sure that we had plenty of time to open it up for any questions. So let me uh, go check out the questions. Um, and from a legal standpoint, Jamie, um, uh, we have to do a process called pseudonymization, um, which is a hard word to pronounce. But that means that we're taking uh, the data that we can't um, show and we're making sure that it's anonymized. So for example, with the GitLab uh, thing, we're sucking down all the data from GitLab, but uh, when there's a user ID, we anonymize that so that we can't directly associate it with the user. And so um, if you go check out in the BizOps, um, in the Meltano um, repo, you can see a merge request for the GitLab ELT and you can see uh, there's a YAML file uh, that shows all the fields that are going to be anonymized and so that we can configure that over time. Um, so ELT stands for Extract, Load, and Transform. And that's where we take uh, the data from one of these APIs and we pull it in, we extract it, um, we load it into our own database, our data warehouse, and then we transform it using uh, a tool like dbt and then it goes into Looker and you're able to see um, visualizations of the actual uh, transformations. And you can answer questions. Um, right, ELT versus ETL. Um, I'll let the data science people argue over that. Um, does Meltano have a data in a standardized format like RDF? Um, when you say data in a standardized format, and there might be other people here that are better to answer that question. What do you mean, Lucas? Yeah, I mean, uh, the data, you will be put, just put it in, in Looker, or do we have like data dumps that we could analyze or play with? Uh, what do we do with the data here? Yeah. Right, so the data comes from, let's say, the Lever API, and we're pulling in all that data, anonymizing it where it needs to be anonymized. And once it's in the data warehouse, uh, it's in a database, then technically you can query it, um, and you can kind of answer your questions from there. But once, uh, what we do is we take, uh, and Taylor is much better for answering this than I am, but we take uh, DBT, which is a tool that will transform the data uh, and make it so that it's suitable to go into Looker. Tell me if I'm saying this right, Taylor, because this is, uh, yeah. No, you're doing great, keep going. Thanks. <laughs> so it's the DBT, uh, DBT is going to um, run over that data and it's going to fiddle with it so that uh, we can then visualize it in a tool like Looker, um, but it could be uh, another tool. Um, but right now we're using Looker. I was just asking because the company I worked before, they uh, worked in that space, so um, yeah. Right, does that answer your question at all? More or less? Taylor, do you have a better answer? Uh, well, I will say, um, Another pitch from the uh, Looker business user training on uh, Monday, the, the 21st. Um, but yeah, DBT just, we can transform the data using just a bunch of nested uh, and connected SQL queries. And then Looker sits on top of that or any really data visualization layer and um, can connect to the different tables and visualize it in myriad ways. And Jamie is asking how she can get in on this uh, so legal data can be tracked. Talk to uh, the data team, talk to Taylor, and right, Taylor, and um, talk to Taylor. And uh, I think you can go from there. Um, yeah, and you can, I'll put in the, the chat here, you can put 
um, issues for visualizations and data you'd like to see and play with um, in there, and we can prioritize from there. And I'll, I'll be giving a FGU at some point here in the next few weeks, I hope, so. Right. Clement is asking, how far are we from a 1.0? Do we know what that would entail? So we don't know what that would entail uh, right now. Right now, our only goals is to solve the, the data team needs. And by doing that, um, we're asking lots of questions and we're solving lots of problems. Um, but we're putting off, um, you know, a lot of the uh, creating, you know, things from scratch. We're using a lot of existing solutions right now um, to do this stuff uh, where it makes sense. Um, but for the ELTs or ETLs, but the ELTs, for example, Singer is a, a company that um, uh, can make a lot of these ELTs, but obviously there's not gonna be an ELT for uh, GitLab and we're not gonna wait around for them to create that. So we're creating our own ELT in that situation, if that makes sense. Yeah, and, and clearly, basically like, <clears throat> uh, we're, we're treating GitLab as sort of customer number one to make sure that we can um, meet our needs with, with the tools. Um, and also we have sort of a, a pressing need to have uh, uh, answers to questions grounded in data, you know, for example, like how effective is a marketing campaign, um, you know, how long is it going to hire someone and, and things like this, right? And so um, we're, we're trying to make sure we can, we can get that data, get those answers um, so we can make better decisions and better informed decisions um, as soon as possible. And, and, and so kind of, you know, as we get time along the way from, from getting the data and getting it processed and getting it visualized, um, we're also going through to, to make sure that the process is easier to use and easier to get started with. Um, and, for, and so there's a couple of projects around there around, you know, how do we have a data model, um, given that a lot of the ELT sources have custom fields and, you know, how, you know, how do we handle the task of mapping custom fields to sort of a standard data model um, and, and things of that nature. And so there'll definitely be work to, um, to kind, of, kind of the next phase is to sort of, you know, kind of try and manage that problem and to make it um, more of a general purpose tool and easy to get it started with um, than, than right now where you have to sort of customize a lot of things. Um, so um, we're kind of looking for, uh, I think a, a lot of the kind of ground and foundation work we're doing in probably Q2. Um, and then we can sort of start tackling more of these uh, sort of customer or two and three and four um, shortly thereafter, if that makes sense. And um, uh, Cortland is saying, how do you see Meltano, the data team and UX working together? Do you mean from a, from a, what is the data that UX would like to look at or how are we going to create a UX for Meltano? Um, more the, the former. So I guess uh, what I was, was uh, getting at was like to, to what extent do we see these as like closely related or like is UX seen as a customer of the data and intelligence that would be provided or is it gonna be incorporated into how we do UX, any thoughts or, or plans there? So, so I can maybe take a first crack and then of course, Jacob and, and any on the team can, can chime in. Um, so I think the UX teams is looking at some other tools. Um, Amplitude is one, which is sort of purpose built for collecting a lot of this more of, of like the web event data um, for usage and funnels and things like that. That tends to have a somewhat different data structure than perhaps like uh, more of the sort of standard SQL uh, structure that we're working with. And so um, I, I think right now they're, they're kind of going in parallel. I think we absolutely will want to try and make sure we have um, a common place to try and pull some of these um, results that we get in from sort of the, the, the web tooling, whether it's Amplitude or something else, um, and, and make sure we can you know, represent those in Looker. Um, but I think right now, um, I think, think we're to try and make sure we pick a tool that's great for UX and great for the front end side, they collect those metrics, um, and you know, make sure that's working well, and then we can pull it into to, uh, to the Meltano and, and kind of Looker resolution process, um, you know, from that point, if, if that makes sense. I don't think we're going to try and I think invent our own thing there um, and, and sort of shoehorn it in uh, right now. Makes sense. And, Thank you. Uh, Brendan has a question. Also, obviously, this is a lot different than our typical open source play. Do we have any concerns about that? Since look, our uh, our data sources. Uh, et cetera, are not open source. Sid, you might be the one to answer this. Sorry, the, the open source, uh, sorry, I didn't get the open source question. Yes, yeah, so the question is, um, Brendan says, this is a lot different than our typical open source play. Do we have any concerns about that since Looker 
our data sources, et cetera, are not open source? Yeah, so um, this is intended to be an all open source solution. Um, so if you look at the Meltano readme, you'll see that our long-term goal is to replace Looker with Jupyter Hub, Jupyter Lab, and um, super, super set visualizations. Uh, Looker is kind of an interim pragmatic solution because the first, the first goal of this project is to do whatever the data team needs and the data team needed visualization and good visualization now. We looked at a couple alternatives to Looker and they were missing uh, features. So we're using Looker, uh, it's, it's the only proprietary thing in the stack other data sources, I don't know exactly what you mean with that, but I think that all the, the, the tabs that we use, all the importers are open source. So, um, you know, I, I just meant, I meant like the data, like, like a Salesforce or whatever, we're pulling data out of, you know. Oh but, yeah. But yeah, no, so, the, the other part of that answer makes a lot of sense, so. Yeah, where the data comes from, it's like, GitLab is open source, but you can make proprietary software with GitLab. Like, we don't care where the, the source, whether the source of the data is proprietary, that we're not requiring companies to go all, all open source, just like we use NetSuite, which is proprietary. Sure, that makes sense. And yeah, I, I hadn't seen that in the readme yet, so thanks, Sid, that answer makes a lot of sense. And then Lucas, thanks, Sid. Uh, Lucas is saying, are we gonna try and do a de-anonymization attack to see if we properly uh, anonymize um, yeah, right now, I, for, for the anonymization, I um, erred on the side of extreme caution. So I just basically over-anonymized. Um, I anonymized uh, to start off everything. I figured it's better to start with a, um, um, you know, or to start on the safe side and then uh, and introduce things as we can reveal that they are uh, okay. Um, you won't get much data from a completely anonymized data source, but um, we'll uh, clear things as we go. And I think also to follow on to that, um, we're trying we're trying to you know first not collect PII in the first place, right? So some of these data sources um, like NetSuite, you know, have have PII in them, and we're trying to be cognizant of that when we when we actually build the ELT, and and so we just control what data we get in the first place, and if there's reasons. You know, I, I think the, the GitLab ELT is the first one we're actually doing like anonymization. Um, we're, we're still starting with data that is open, right? So, so, so we're only pulling in, you know, GitLab-org data, which is already available. We're not tracking confidential issues. Um, and so, you know, it's basically stuff that's already um, uh, available out there in the world. Uh, so um, we're trying to, uh, you know, avoid that uh, as much as possible without having to worry about anonymization if at all, if that's at all feasible. And PII stands for personally identifiable information, just in case anybody's wondering. Um, Yope says superset looks super cool. What's stopping us from using it short term? Um, might have just missed this, just joined. Yeah. Um, I, so I, I think it, you know, it didn't have all of the chart types that we were looking for to, to replicate for our own internal needs. Um, I think that was one of the, the, the main ones. I think it also has pretty nice uh, integration with the Git workflow, um, which has been very helpful. Yeah, as I mentioned that as well, it's um, pretty neat that um, essentially you can make changes in Looker and it gets version controlled and you know, get merge requests back into GitLab and, and it's a pretty neat workflow um, as far as how you manage that and how you share things. Uh, so. Yeah, you know, one of the reasons of using Looker is learning from it. Uh, they've done an outstanding job of, of, of combining like the data lifecycle with like the DevOps lifecycle using Git as, as one of the first ones. So I think we're going to learn from all the good things they, uh, they did and it will help us to make a better product. Awesome. Does anybody else have any other questions? Uh, not really a fully formed question, but I figure I'll, I'll just share anyway. But uh, Amplitude looks to have very interesting applications to trial to paid conversion, core to paid conversion, retention, expansion, um, you know, one paid plan to a higher paid plan upgrade. Um, are we are we thinking of amplitude that broadly, or are we 
focused um, on a more kind of limited use case in terms of how we're evaluating it. So I don't I don't know if this is the uh, a question for for the UX team or or for you. From what I, from what I've seen, um, and maybe Victor's better to to answer this because I know he was kind of heading up some of that. Um, the initial rollout is probably going to be around some simple events, um, specifically within I think the merge request view. Um, and then I'm planning on having conversations with the uh, open mark to to kind of figure that out. I mean, I would I would think we'd want um, events everywhere where it makes sense um, and can be useful as long as we're asking good questions and have you know good hypotheses about what's what's happening. Um, but yeah, maybe that's that's Altano is not super focused on that stuff right now. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can add some color there, uh, Taylor and Cortland. Uh, yeah, Ampli uh, we can pretty much think about them as separate projects for now, and we're just having we're, we're being careful that we don't want to block ourselves in the future. Um, so at the outset, right now, Amplitude would be focused on the needs of, say, the UX team, the product team, uh, in particular for GitLab.com, um, and essentially we're we're paying for. Uh, you know, as quickly as possible, getting insights from our users in GitLab.com, and so we can iterate on the product. So that that's um, hopefully a very relatively quick win, and um, you know, requires us you know writing some code on the front end and getting that data and using Amplitude's tools in particular, say you know you know similar to say Google Analytics or Heap or any other tools, where the data lives on their servers and you log into their system. And you use the great visualization and charts and so forth there directly. So there's very little setup on our part. Uh, where, whereas you, what you've seen with the update today, there's a lot more custom work that's required. Now, um, in the future, there's I, I can see a number of use cases. Uh, you know, more the obvious ones is with uh, Amplitude. You know, replacing Google Analytics, for example, on the marketing pages and making more of that integration on the Amplitude side, but even further out, um, how can we take that data from the Amplitude side and merge it with a lot of the data that we've been talking about in today's call? And yes, we verified that, yes, they, they, they allow us to do that. It, it's a you know, common workflow. You can export that data uh, via API or en masse. Um, and so that's not something we're, we plan to do right now, but it's available for us. Um, and it's in talking with Amplitude, it's um, uh, it's something that a lot of companies do. So not our focus right now, but we, we were flexible and it's extensible that way. And so when those, uh, when we need to have those conversations will be set up very well. Um, and as you can see, Taylor is well aware of, of those, uh, of our amplitude efforts as well. So we're not, we're, we're definitely not working in silos. And lastly, let me circle back up front and with amplitude, um, part of that plan is that their customer success team will be engaged with, um, so they'll teach us how to use uh, Amplitude in very much the same way that, um, you know, Taylor set up a call for us with Looker uh, on Monday. Uh, I can only presume that these organizations have, have customer success teams just as we do, um, and helping us um, be successful and, and using the product correctly, uh, logging the right events, sending the right events, um, and so forth. So um, just a quick update there. Yeah, I, I, I wanna add my thoughts here. I, my hope is that if at least for Amplitude, once it's set up, we everyone can just go in there and play with it. It's it's very accessible in the sense that you don't have to write any SQL. You could just click around, um, and I'm fully intending that everyone will have access to that within within GitLab Inc. to just uh, click around and explore and see how people are using our product and which features and how they are using it. And it's really cool. I am looking forward to it. Awesome. Does anybody else have any other questions or comments or concerns? Great, if not, everybody have a great day and we'll see you on the team call. Bye.